Hello once again to Right Share Podcast. Right Share Etiquette Podcast. Yes, I can talk. Alrighty, so hi, 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 hi. I'm going to be your host for the next approximately 15 minutes. And it's cool because on this wacky Wednesday, I see the sun is shining. Yay! Finally, because all afternoon, all morning long, it's been cloudy, gray, rainy, cold. In May, almost the end of May in Michigan. And so the sun is shining. Yay, 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 yay. So I have read just a couple articles um, I want to discuss with you fine people today out there in the land of Spreaker, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Cast, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever and whenever you might be listening to me. And thank you for all your ears. I appreciate you giving me your ears to have a listen to my podcast. Thank you so much. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. So I have a question for all of you drivers and for all of you passengers out there in Uber and Lyft land. Are you a chatty Cathy? Are you a nosy Parker? Hmm, good question, good question. So let's uh, get more in depth on these questions, shall we? Chatty Cathy's, nosy Parker's, and it can go apply towards a driver, it can apply towards a passenger. And once again, we're getting back to basic small talk etiquette, basic car etiquette. Small talk etiquette basically is asking you to be ever mindful and courteous and be polite that your passenger, your driver, sometimes the questions you ask and where your intentions are good, you're not trying to be malicious or you're not trying to be rude you're just trying to break the ice you're trying to make small talk okay and sometimes you're asking questions that you know that driver might have a little issue with or that passenger might have a little issue with and let's be specific asking passengers slash drivers where do they live are they married how many kids do they have who they voted for in the last presidential election. Um, you know, what age are they? These are questions that, you know, are intrusive and borderline creepy. Don't be that chatty pa- Kathy. Don't be that nosy Parker. And I'm speaking to you drivers out there. And I'm speaking to you passengers out there. And like you said, sometimes people, they're trying to break the ice. They want to make conversation. Many times I've had passengers in my car telling me, I love to talk to my Lyft and Uber driver because I want to get to know them. I want to be on a, a different level with them versus they're a stranger, I'm a stranger. They want to get a little bit more personable. And without actually, in all honesty, that's not bad. Being personable is not bad. Being getting too personal different story here different story um one of my questions that is are one of the questions that is frequently asked of me is how's your day going do you really truly want to know how my day is going with all in all honesty or is this your gateway to breaking ice with me and to engaging me in small talk I do find that question to be intrusive. I don't ask you how your day is going unless you offer up that information. So that to me is one of those questions where it can come under small talk etiquette. And then sometimes people, they find it to be just very general, very broad spectrum minded. Um, You know, they're just trying to break the ice and you got a passenger who's an extrovert and they can't quit talking. They have talked 
since the time they get into your car, since the time they leave your vehicle. And as an introvert, that is so draining. People, 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 that is so draining, okay? Yes, Lyft and Uber both want their drivers to be engaging. They want them to be friendly. They want them to be personable. They want them to be affable and gregarious, hospitable, welcoming, the whole nine yards. I agree with that philosophy. I too, I really do. However, there's also a point where a passenger and a driver just takes it to a whole nother level. And it's like, okay, now you're getting to the point where like your questions are getting just, uh, you're, you know, getting creepy here. You don't need to know how many kids I have if I'm married. You don't need to know where I live as a driver. And me as a driver, I feel that to be rather a safety issue, a, sa- a concern of mine. I don't want you to really know where I live. I don't, I just feel weird about that. I just do, you know, and I'm not asking you where you live. I mean, I know I'm picking you up from a s- destination. Maybe that's your home. Maybe that's your place of business. Maybe it's a relative's house. Am I going to remember it? Not really, unless you make a ride so memorable, it can be a bad experience. It can be a good experience. However, um, passengers on that on that same hand don't need a driver wanting to know. So, you married? So, you got a boyfriend? How tall are you? How much do you weigh? You know, it's... Don't go there, people. Just don't go there. Yeah, if you want to break ice, I get it. I get it. There are other topics that can be discussed that a lot of people will be open to drivers and passengers. They will be more um, responsive to, more receptive to. And you can do it and have a fantastic conversation without being nosy. In all honesty, you don't need to be a Snoop sister, okay? Or or Snoop brother, okay? Just don't. So I'm going to also, I just read this article about, and it touches upon talking with not so much the passenger, but the driver. Um, Uber's introducing what is known as a Zen mode, Z-E-N. I believe it might be in beta. Don't quote me on this. There is an article. I will leave the link for you in the description box below so you can read more about it and and basically get informed. Zen mode. Basically, it's a little function on the passenger's app that's going to send a message to the driver like, shut up, quit talking. I want to sleep. You're too nosy, whatever have you. Not those words so much, okay? But basically, it's just going to tell the driver at the beginning of the ride, look, I just want to ride in quiet. I want to ride in peace. Please don't talk. Uh, you know, I would like to be able to send that message to the passenger. But yeah, that's just me personally, you know. So Lyft is also thinking about that. And I have also read an article on The Verge, I will leave the link for you below so you can read about it. Whether they're actually going to activate and enable these functions and features in the near future, who knows exactly when this is going to happen? Who knows exactly? So also, too, I do have a little FYI for all you passengers out there in Uberland. Now, drivers have always been told they have to maintain a certain rating on the rideshare platforms of Lyft and Uber, or they will risk being deactivated, and that the ratings cannot fall beyond 4.6. I have five stars. I want to keep five stars. I want to maintain five stars. Maintaining five stars, it's work. You know, you do have to put yourself out there you do have to be welcoming and hospitable and sometimes for an introvert such as myself 
it's work. And I mean, in any job that I've done where I have to deal with the general public, it's work. It's not just Lyft or Uber, okay? So, let me just look at my notes here. Da, 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 da. Uh, where did I see it? Might be on Vox. or Oh, it's on The Verge. Okay, it's on The Verge. And it's just a general article. There isn't any author to it. Be aware that you as a passenger, if your rating falls below 4.6 or is 4.6 and below, and the reason your rating is so low is due to your behavior within the vehicle, you're not practicing good common courtesy, you're not practicing car etiquette, and it's reflecting in your rating, you run the risk of being deactivated and removed from the rider platform. In other words, if this is your main mode of transportation, getting to and from point A to point B to point C and back again, and you have a very low rating, 4.6 or below, you um, need to pull up your socks because you will be removed. And then where, what will you do? You'll be caught, you know, between a rock and a hard place. So basically, read the community guidelines. And it defines awful behavior. Awful behavior, let me give you a quick, brief, dis- um, oh, which one? Excuse me, the words right now are failing me. Description of awful behavior. Using abusive language. F this, F that, and this, and that. Being rude to your driver, you know. Um, not really um, like just not practicing good common courtesy, good car etiquette, you know, making a mess with inside the car. I mean, one day I had this person put her feet up on the back seat of the car. I'm like, wait, what? Uh, were you raised in a barn? Don't put your feet up on the back seat of my car. Needless to say, I had to use some upholstery cleaner afterwards. Just to give you a brief idea, this is considered awful behavior. This can lead to a low rating, which then in turn will remove you off the rideshare platform. Don't be like that, passengers. Don't be like that. So anyways, like I said, I will leave all the descriptions in the link below. Thank you for listening. I'm going to go drive. I appreciate everybody listening out there. Thank you for giving me your ears. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good day. Random practice, random acts of kindness. All right, I've had like way too much caffeine. So I'm going to sign off now. Peace, love, and woof. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.